Hi, Julian. We can see your video. Um, yes, and you're unmuted at the moment already. So Julian Meyer is um, actually, as you can see, this conference, we are trying to go a little bit outside of our privacy bubble, so to speak. And we are inviting not only privacy experts to speak about privacy, but also people from the business side um, which and um, as much as I don't like to really separate and pick sides here, but still people who are not, whose, whose job is not privacy 100% of the time, it's also important to bring them in the conversation. And so Julian is one of those people as well. He is also a privacy enthusiast and I have to admit that I get a lot of inspiration from him. Um, but Julian's work is actually sales representative, and he's had, he has years of experience of uh, selling privacy first products, which I find fascinating. I'm so thankful that you are speaking here. Um, so Julian is going to talk about his personal experience about selling a privacy uh, product. And before I go ahead and, and give the stage to you, I'm going to ask you, how do you prefer to have questions? Do you want them rather to have to, to have questions in the end of the presentation or as they appear or what is what is easier for you? Um, I think I like Jason's approach a lot, actually. Um, OK, that, like if there is something which which just fits this slide and this. Um, All right. If there's the fifth kind of slide, just let's just do it right away and the rest. Um, okay, fantastic. Well, I'm here. I'm going to switch off my video, but I'm I'm <laughs> here any moment. And uh, if I'm switching it in, the, uh, switching it on the video, you know that there is a, a question coming up. But uh, other than that, uh, you're welcome to also um, address to me. Perfect. And I'm just quickly trying to set my screen up. Um, All right. Yeah, thanks a lot, Masha, for having me. Um, I really enjoyed the previous talks, which I was also um, enthusiastically watching. Uh, when you asked me actually to, to give a talk on my personal experience on selling privacy products, uh, I have to admit that I, I struggled a bit to know where to start um, because there is probably so much uh, to talk about. Uh, but I hope this, this talk now brings you some value. And it's, it's basically how much it is called uh, selling privacy products and based on my personal experience at um, the company Wire. But I will start with the part I'm very sure about, which is a, which is a quick intro about myself. So I'm 29 years old, living in Berlin, uh, having a marketing and IT background. And I would describe myself as a privacy enthusiast who built up uh, sales at Wire. And at the end um, of, my, uh, of my time at Wire, I was responsible for customers like the German government, for example. Um, and now I'm basically working on a new startup idea where I'm trying to bring privacy into the mental health space. So before joining Wire, I had the feeling that very often software is easy to use or it is privacy focused. Um, but I rarely saw both of them in the same software solution. And it, it simply struck me that, <laughs> that, that we were not able to bring these two words together. And what we also saw very often was basically that when two of these type of product competed, we very often have the not so privacy focused one winning against the other one. Uh, a good example probably is WhatsApp, which has billions of users nowadays. Um, and if we, uh, if we sum up all the other users from other privacy focused uh, messenger solutions, we don't even reach the same number. Um, so I think the, 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 the core issue which we had since a long time or since the case is basically that privacy tools were rarely easy to use. And if that's the case, I think it was very often a lost game uh, from the get-go. 
And people simply chose the solution which which was easy to use because it simply solved their problem which they had. Like for WhatsApp, for example, um, easily texting with their friends. But very often they simply didn't see the risk behind it. Like when you upload your address book on WhatsApp, uh, you identify all your uh, contacts in your address book. Like WhatsApp could, can basically create a very nice social graph around you, around your friends, and simply knows who you're connected with and also gets the uh, real names of people. And another example probably is PGP. Like it's very easy to, um, to send an unencrypted email to someone because you just need an email address of this other person. But everyone can read this email because it's unencrypted. Uh, sending this email or the same email via PGP is simply more cumbersome. Even though it's a great technology, the mainstream never picked it up um, because it simply was very hard to use. At university, I was writing a thesis on mass surveillance um, and the tools which are used today. And I compared this actually with the book of George Orwell, 1984. And in the second thesis I wrote about uh, if GDPR is a chance for underdogs like Wire. And that also brought me to Wire itself. So I joined the company in 2017 with the goal to basically bring privacy to mainstream. I simply had this idea that if there's a product which is very easy to use and comes with all the security and privacy aspects built into, people have to use it because there is no, there, there is simply no reason anymore why they should not. Because all the, uh, all the features they want are there, but also all the security and privacy is there. So wire seemed to me the, the perfect opportunity where I can combine my passion to technology and to privacy with a job which simply pays my bills at the end of the month. So for the ones who don't know Wire, um, it's an uh, end-to-end encrypted messenger with security and privacy as USP. And it's fully open source. So you can basically audit the code and um, it's very transparent from that angle. When I joined Wire, it was, uh, it was focusing on, on B2C, so the consumer market. And nowadays it's mainly focusing on uh, B2B, so businesses only. I joined Wire at, at, as a marketing intern um, where I was working on campaigns to simply get the brand name out um, as a B2C product and represented it at different events and conferences where I was talking about the solution. Then later on during the first six months as an intern, uh, Wire started working on a business product. And so I switched into the product development. And there I was working with a colleague of mine to simply figure out how this new business tool of Wire should look like, um, what are people willing to pay? What should we charge for? Um, and simply what features should we offer in order to compete with solutions like Skype for Business, Slack, and Microsoft Teams, for example. When we had a good understanding about this business offering, we simply needed salespeople. Um, for me, it was a quite logical step that the two people um, of us, like me and my colleague in the product development, that we fill this gap. Because we, we simply talk to over 300 people, we know what they want, and we simply um, try to also solve their problems now in the sales department. And so early on, um, I was working with, uh, with, with customers already um, to basically solve their problems of um, having GDPR compliant communication in their company. And in the early days, we basically divided our customers just 
respond based on the language. So if a customer didn't feel comfortable speaking English to my colleague, I just took over. And especially in the German market, this was uh, a huge factor. And so within this, this four years at Wire, I basically grew from, um, from catering SMBs uh, to enterprises and eventually to the public sector and government customers. But there is a catch to that. I actually don't like salespeople. And when I started at, uh, in the sales department, I also said, mm, I kind of know what I need to do, but I, uh, my disclaimer is I'm not a salesperson. So I just need to figure out how this works. Um, and I will just do my best. And when I grew into, into this, into the sales role, um, I was basically coming from, uh, I was coming to, into the space as a privacy advocate who simply tried to solve customers' problems and make, still make wire mainstream. And the reason why I say I don't like salespeople is simply because I, when I was working at the, at, at, at our family business in Italy, I simply had most, or I mostly had bad experience with salespeople because they never really try to solve my problem. They always try to convince me about a product I didn't need, or they just wanted to tell me their sales pitch to basically check my name off from their daily list. So at the end of the day, everyone lost time and I didn't really see much value in this. So I kind of knew when, when I'm moving into the space, I simply don't want to be such a salesperson. I just want to give my customers a better experience than I got back then. And um, especially in Germany, there was simply a, a huge need for a solution like Wire. And we got quite some traction, um, especially on my sales side, because I was mainly um, working with these German customers. And the more traction we got, um, we also had to hire new salespeople basically to, to basically cater um, for all this interest we got from, from, from prospects. And when new people were joining the sales team, um, all of them were much more experienced than I was in this field. And some even had more than 15 years of experience selling um, very known products and working at very known companies. And, but I still noticed that they were all struggling to sell this product. And they also just continued struggling with it over, over, um, over time. Whereas I was hitting my annual target um, constantly. So, and, and it, it took me a while to kind of understand what's, what's, what's going wrong here. And I, I tried to distill a, a few things. And uh, one thing I would say, basically, I would say that standard salespeople uh, were simply not successful at selling privacy products at least with the experience I had at Wire. And what I mean with, with standard is basically, um, usually at, in sales, you have this, this different phases, like the, 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 um, the, the pre-sales part, um, then the actual sales part where you try to close uh, the actual commercial deal. Um, and then afterwards to simply have this customer success part where you try to get the customer up and running with the solution. And a tool like Wire um, was simply more demanding. And I think most of the privacy-focused products are mostly more complex because they simply need to solve, in order to get to the same result, for example, like a video call like we do here over uh, Zoom now, um, a privacy-focused company like Wire had to, to do much more to, to basically get to the same number of participants in a call, for example. And so um, we as salespeople, we were simply faced with uh, lots of limitations from day one. And we also had to convince the security and legal people 
about the security and privacy aspects of the product, um, but still, in the end of the day, provides a decent quality because the only thing the end user cares about is that the product actually works. And so you basically needed much more uh, an approach, which was which is much more hands-on, I would say. And that is simply not what you see with, when selling other products like Microsoft Teams, for example, which just kind of works out of the box. And then we also had this problem that when people compared us with market leaders, um, they didn't really understand understood how they should really compare us because they simply um, had a list um, with two columns. One is Microsoft Teams, one is Wire. And when basically going through a list of features, Wire was just uh, losing in that list because we couldn't get all the features which Microsoft Teams, for example, have. Um, we eventually would get there, but it takes time and it um, just needs uh, more resources to, to build this. And so in this direct comparison, we, we, we simply struggled. And the, in, in, in order to basically educate the customer about these limitations and, and why they often are even, um, why they even have good reasons sometimes to actually protect the customer, the sales people had to be experts in the field. So they had to be very much aware of the privacy implication a certain feature might have. For example, um, the, the analytics part, which, you, uh, which exists in Microsoft Teams or in Slack, um, that also brings risks depending on your threat model. And that basically meant that as a salesperson, or you are an expert in, 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 in this privacy aspect, or you simply struggle a lot um, to understand why the customer is actually not buying. And as I mentioned before, privacy-focused uh, products, they tend to be more complex um, than the ones who simply don't focus on privacy. And uh, we also tried at Wire to, to outsource, for example, technical deployment or uh, uh, sales via channel partners. But what I've seen, it, it rarely worked, or it actually never really worked. And the reason is basically because um, the, the no, uh, you cannot really build up the knowledge you have internally about your complex solution in another organization which has no direct access to your developers. And so in the end of the day, I think you need a very holistic business model and where you basically offer the customer um, all the all the needs he has uh, about the support, about the deployment in-house. Um, and probably a good example here is Red Hat, which basically develops open source technology, but also offers commercial packages to cater for all this, this, this needs of customers. And as a privacy focused product, you're hopefully also not tracking your customers. And in, in sales, very often, um, you simply see this, this, en uh, this enrichment tools, um, which try to analyze um, who visited your website and tr they try to give you a good or detailed profile of who those people are. But what I've seen, usually they are just very much useless. Um, because it, it's more like a guessing game in the end of the day that they just give you a name of, of a company which might have visited your website. But it, for you as a salesperson, it's just guessing in the end of the day to, to figure out who was it really. So um, the, the good news here is um, you don't really need those tools and you can just ignore them. And um, if, you, if you basically... Um, really understand your target audience, you can reach out to them in an honest way and don't try to track them all the way long. And you just need to have a good product market fit. I think there's a question. 
Yeah, I just wanted to quickly <laughs> jump in just because yeah. you're talking about something that I have a question about. There is this um, sort of mindset that, well, in speaking about privacy, there's often this mindset of if you have privacy by design or if you are a product that is privacy first, you need to sacrifice something else. So it is like privacy versus security or privacy versus marketing very often or privacy versus sales and do you really think that or what is your opinion on that generally that you really need to sacrifice uh, sales and marketing if you are privacy oriented privacy friendly because you don't have say or you don't it's not that you don't have but you're you don't prioritize analytics and um, mm -hmm. tracking and targeting and things like that there that I, I'm not a specialist myself, but I hear a lot that they can be a great um, help. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's, it's often also a question of how deep you do this. Um, like, I think the aspect you mean is are, are going more into this, this analytics part, like for example, Google Analytics and so on, mm -hmm. um, where I would say, you, especially in privacy, focused um, product, you have to be very careful what you do there. And obviously, if you if you try to measure any data there, I would say, um, keep this data in-house um, because it's, it's, otherwise it's always a bit like um, <laughs> you're telling Big Brother that this other person was here. Um, yeah. Or at, at the same time, you want to protect this one customer from this other Big Brother. Um, the the, the, the part, what I mean here is a bit like there are this, this, this enrichment tool, which basically gives you, uh, um, which basically do something what we heard in the previous talk, actually, um, where you simply know a part of the name, the email address, for example, and they simply enrich this, 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 this two um, parts of, of a person with all the other data yeah. which is available there and which complete very the often profile, is complete so the profile right and uh luckily um they don't really work well in in europe um simply because uh, they they don't do so basically when when gdpr was uh, implemented they kind of also block um uh, data mining in uh, europe um so those tools in general work better overseas, um, at least until today. Let's see what the, the Californian Privacy Act uh, does about that. Um, but in the end of the day, I think it's, um, they are, they're just not worth the effort in the first place. Um, because they, if, you, if you have a good product market fit, you know your, your, your audience. And if you just talk to them in an honest way, you will understand what problems they have and who else might have those problems as well. And then you can just reach out. And if your offering and your message is interesting, people will reply, either said. That's, um, a, that's a good answer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I think also the prerequisite for this is actually on my next slide. Um, what I, um, in order to, to not constantly fight about this, um, because it's also a question like um, if, if you're building um, new features um, or if you think about um, putting analytics into your product, it's also a question, how much privacy do we want to give our customer? And I think to, to simply avoid all this, this discussions in the first place or to simply have better discussions around this, you also need a very strong company culture around privacy. So if, if everyone is if everyone agrees that this product should be should do its its best to uh, to protect the customer's privacy, I mean there's no discussion to to um, to be uh, to build huge analytics engines or to use certain tools or not like um, uh, for data mining or enrichment um, and in the end of the day I think this also uh, when, when you basically go down this path 
um, where you where you simply don't have a um, a strong company culture around privacy, you also start to simply lose your USPs if they were um, privacy and security. Um, and unfortunately, also at, at Wire, they also got lost uh, a bit um, over the years. So there were some things which um, that proved to be a success, I would say, with the work I did. Um, so I think that, uh, so far I've talked uh, quite a bit about the, the struggles. Um, um, I think now we come a bit to the uh, lighter part about this. So I would say um, in the uh, in the sales part, um, I think qualification is simply key when you um, when you're selling privacy focused products. And I also think that sales is a lot about saying no to customers. If at least if you um, want to win in the long term. And I've seen uh, colleagues basically jumping on every lead which came in um, and just trying to, to simply sell the product without really knowing what is the problem the customer tries to solve and is the customer actually interested. And I instead always try to be very, very strict when it came to qualifying a new lead. Um, so I wanted to first figure out if there was a willingness to pay for privacy and security in the first place. Um, because otherwise you always end up with this feature comparison, which you don't want to have at all. Um, or if there was some openness to understand why privacy and security are important and why the customer might have a problem. Um, or um, at least, I, and I also try to understand if um, what the customer wants to have is also something we can actually offer. And if, let's say, if all this was a no, um, to me, that was simply a lost game. And I wanted to save the customer and also myself time by telling them that this is probably just not a match. And um, I also try to, um, to, to give them an idea what wire could solve in their company and simply leave the door open in case they come back at a later time, like when they have a privacy breach, for example, a data breach. And it feels like, I just want to add, I just want to comment on that. It is not something that you often hear from salespeople that you have to say no. Uh, so it feels like what made you a good salesperson for a privacy first product was being a privacy first salesperson instead of being a sales first salesperson. Might be. <laughs> uh, um, I, I think I think it was just perhaps also a good match between the product and also my background, most probably. Um, um, so that was definitely working out quite well, I would say. Yeah. Great. I'll I'll let you finish. I have uh, thousands of more questions, but I'll let you finish. Great. Um, and so what, what, what else I always try to simply do at Wire was always to, to simply solve the actual problem the customer has. So very often you also see, or what I have seen at least in sales is that um, salespeople try to, to sell some extras, um, which are not actually solving the customer's problem. Um, but very often they just try to even hide an absolute necessary feature, which is not there, and and also at, at at Wire, I often saw colleagues which were simply too too salesy, I would say, and just struggled with them in the end signing the contract because they um, were just over promising what the solution was not <laughs> um, or or couldn't achieve for the customer. And so my approach was always to to uh, and. And probably one other aspect here is also that very often you also see kind of like managers trying to, to interfere um, into, in the relationship between the salesperson and the customer. And, uh, and also there, my approach was always to, to simply protect the customer uh, from that. 
and simply try to find solutions which really solve his pain points. And, and I also would say I, I also saw that the customer myself more as a team where we simply try to find a solution which works uh, for them. And so I kind of positioned myself somewhere between the customer and wire, where I simply try to, to balance out, out both sides. And one example here is when uh, one very large customer tried to introduce wire as, as a solution, they simply didn't have a, a budget um, to buy wire for the entire organization. And on the other side, wire was missing lots of features um, to cater for the entire company. But but we both knew that this had potential. Um, we just need to be patient because uh, we knew that um, the features uh, make a lot of sense. The features will be there in a few years. And then in the meantime, we just need to figure out a way how, how to balance these two sides out. And we basically started a very small proof of concept with just a few users. And Wire simply continued to add functionalities. And two years after, the, this is one of the largest customers. Um, and so without finding this balance between the two sides, uh, such a customer might have been lost early on. And the last um, thing I would say, which, which proved as a success was to simply be as transparent as, and honest as possible. And um, because I would say there's probably nothing more annoying than a salesperson who is just overselling their product, um, which in the end just turns out as a waste of time for both sides. And I always try to simply be very transparent with the customer, telling them um, what features we might have, which we will never have, um, or what uh, pro uh, progress we made um, on a requested feature or a bug. And one example here is probably um, with one large government customer, which, which I have, um, which tried to, um, which wanted to simply deploy wire in a ultra complex environment, which you can imagine in, in a government uh, um, environment, um, which we have never done before. Um, but we already established a very good relationship where we, where both sides could rely on each other. And I simply told him that we are not sure if we can hold this deadline. And also, I didn't really know how much time we will need and, um, to figure out if we can actually meet this timeline or not. Um, so we just had more question marks than answers for him. And, but we, at the same time had a very specific time window when the solution needs to be up and running. So he was obviously uh, not super happy about this, but he appreciated the honesty. And in the end, we, we made the deadline due to a fantastic development teamwork, but without being honest to the customer in the first place, we would simply have risked the entire project if we didn't make it. So to, and with a very cheeky punchline, I would say, um, this is basically a story how I became the most successful salesperson at Wire without actually being a salesperson. And if there's one thing which you can take away from this talk, I would say it's probably uh, that you should always try to uh, solve the customer's problem, no matter in what part of the Comp uh, or in, in no matter which role you have in, in, in your company, um, because you can solve the problems of customers in every role, basically. And privacy products are most probably also harder to, to sell, but it's not impossible. Um, and also more and more customers simply demand also this privacy. But I also think that salespeople just need to become experts of what they are selling and also knowing very deeply what a solution is doing and what it's not doing. Great, Julian, thank you so much. It is actually very refreshing to hear 
um, this other focus on on the on privacy, and um, unfortunately, I don't have the time to ask the thousand uh, the, all of the thousand questions that I have for you. But um, at least maybe we can cover one in the in the next three minutes that we have mm -hmm. left until the the final uh, talk, which is going to be a panel discussion. So uh, wire is obviously um, it sounds like it, the product is doing the right thing. It is privacy by design. It is privacy first. It is trying to solve a problem that needs a solution. But at the same time, it's such a sophisticated product, as you, as you say, to sell and a hard, uh, generally a hard technology to understand and to really articulate its value to word it in a way that non-privacy or non-security people can understand. So my question is, what was the biggest struggle for you personally in the whole, you know, selling a privacy first product? And what was the best part about it? What was the best thing um, in selling the product? Let's start with the latter one. Like the, 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 the best part was absolutely to meet uh, amazing people um, because I was, I was basically able to meet um, lots of activists um, and NGOs, which did um, amazing work, which I knew from, which I obviously knew from before. Um, but now I was basically in this position where I, I'm trying to help them uh, set up their communication in a secure way. And depending on the, on the NGO we are talking about, um, with just this tool, we were also just saving lives of people. Um, like we, we simply had uh, some, some NGOs um, working in, in, in crisis areas in the Middle East. And um, the, the last thing you want to have is that uh, unencrypted message gets intercepted by the um, not so nice party in that area. And so with, with Wire, we, we were simply solving that for them and simply keeping those people in the field secure. And, and that was great, even though we were sitting in our nice office and uh, in the, on the nice couch, but at the same time, we simply did um, some great work there. Um, the, the struggling part, I would say, um, is... Um, I think it's 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 a, it's a question how how much of um, of of a um, privacy culture you have in the company. Um, so uh, I I touched this a bit on one of the slides um, where I would say the 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 more or the better company culture you have around privacy in every single department in the management on the investor side the better um, because everyone understands the benefits of it and everyone also understands um, what kind of direction we need to go. And if this is not there, um, you're also just struggling as a privacy focused salesperson because you simply miss a bit of support around you. Great. Thank you so much, Julie. And your uh, view is, is so, so useful. And um, I'm very glad that you found the time and um, yeah, and presented on our conference. I think it is super important for us to not stay. I mean, when I say us, I mean those uh, little GDPR fan club that we are kind of forming here to not uh, stay in the bubble of just the privacy experts focus. So I'm super, super thankful. I know it's not the easiest position to be in to become into a privacy conference and speak from a salesperson perspective. But thank you very, very much. I'm gonna, um, if there's anything else you want to add, um, final words, um, now is the chance. No, and no otherwise... I mean, if, if there are any more questions, um, there's my email address, also my PGP key in case anyone doesn't want to leak the email content, uh, feel free to reach out. And thanks a lot Great. for having me. Thank you, Julian. Thank you very, very much.